You know, and and actually, I enjoyed it because I got to tell because Eric did not remember why that we had only spoken once in 24 years. And at the top of the table for three, uh, I reminded him of that. And we did a little jousting back and forth, and then we got on to other topics. And Michael was an excellent moderator. Um, We talked for an hour and a half. I understand that program usually goes less than half of that time, so I don't know if it's going to be a two-parter. I don't know if it's going to be cut up or what. I don't know when it's going to air, but... There was some tension, but at the end, Eric and I managed to uh, bond over our mutual hatred for, you know, the biggest idiot in the history of wrestling, Vince Russo. And so the enemy of my enemy is my friend, um, mm-hmm. and, and Eric and I were able to to come to a uh, uh, an agreement that, you know, regardless of what we thought of each other in the past, <laughs> neither one of us <laughs> be, even begins to be as big of a shit stain as as Vince Russo is. So we bonded over that. Right. That, that is great. And it's kind of weird, not only you and Bischoff kind of talking or you and Bischoff kind of, you know, reminiscing, it's just weird in general to see you back in WB, but it's almost kind of the right thing for it. If they're going to be the, you know, the janitors of history, if they're going to have all this stuff on the network, it's only fitting to have a guy like you, who's a huge historian in your own right, back you know wouldn't you say wouldn't you you say you fit kind of hand in hand with what they're kind of trying to do with the network um you know i think in some cases i mean there's some things on the network that i wouldn't watch if you held a gun to my head but when they're showing the the old uh footage of wcw or <laughs> excuse me crockett promotions as you can tell i'm i've i lost my voice that week since i didn't sleep for eight or nine days um you know if they're going to be showing stuff like that and exposing the work that all those guys did, especially the Crockett promotion stuff, to an entirely new audience, you know, I can, I can definitely get behind that because, you know, that, that stuff holds up today. Uh, I mean, you know, people remember, and I see it all the time on my Twitter, at the Jim Cornette, or people at, you know, right at my website, jimcornette.com. The stuff from the 80s holds up today, whereas the stuff that was on TV last week uh, a lot of people can't remember what it was. So, you know, I, I, I enjoy that part of it. That is so true, and I totally agree. Is there any more network projects for you in the future, or is the door open for any more network projects? Well, you know, there there is. We didn't go into this saying, okay, we're just going to do this once and never again. I'm not going to speak to you people after this. Um if Connecticut was closer to Louisville, I'm sure there'd be a lot more things that I'd be open to. I don't know um, if they want to pay me as much money as it would take to get me to drive to fucking Connecticut, you know, on a regular basis. Um, <laughs> I, I don't fly. If, not only do I not fly United Airlines, I don't fly any airlines because of that. You have no rights in an airport anymore. And I don't like being in a, in a fucking metal death tube five miles in the air with some drunken fuck that's probably had a fight with his wife in charge of my life uh but you know if if something was to come up there there's two things that i enjoy going back and examining and talking about the old footage of when wrestling was actually wrestling and training the next generation which i did in ovw for quite some time and you know john cena randy orton and those guys are are a, a legacy of that if it's something to do with that, um, then yes, I'm entirely open. Uh, not saying we're going to do it, not saying we're not, but I'm open to the suggestion. And to be honest, I, there's nothing I'm going to be doing full time for anybody but myself anymore ever again, just because I like being home a lot and on the road very little. And you know, and and uh, one thing I saw with that production is those guys that are that are still in this full time and still have the passion for it they're on the road all the time they're working long hours 16 hour days or more that's that's behind me now i like i will visit anywhere but i'm not going to live anywhere except castle cornet in louisville kentucky for the rest of my life now obviously you were there you kind of experienced wrestlemania weekend you know kind of all over again what were your thoughts on WrestleMania itself? Did it live up to the hype? Well, I hate to tell you this, 
but I didn't see WrestleMania itself. I have uh, uh, Brian Last, my uh, uh, diehard co-host of of my podcast and and my partner in crime, is going to uh, send me a link to something where I can watch the show. But on WrestleMania Sunday, I was uh, previously committed to do Jim Ross's show. Um, and, and we did that with Bruce Pritchard and Mick Foley came by as, as a surprise guest. And we were there to show, you know, some solidarity with Jr. after the recent events in his life. And, and after that, that was the, because I had the what culture pro wrestling guys come to Louisville a couple of days, uh, before we left for Orlando and shoot some stuff here at the castle. And then we had the 900 mile trip down to Orlando. And then I had, two full days with the WWE and then I had the what culture show. And then I had JR show when WrestleMania was going on, I was enjoying my first night's good night's sleep. And the first meal that I had eaten in about five days, it wasn't delivered my ho- to my hotel room door in a sack. So I was not at WrestleMania and haven't seen it yet. So I can't really comment, but I heard that everybody loved most everything. <laughs> and I'll say this, uh, I've just got to see if, if nothing else, uh, the Undertaker Roman Reigns match because I think that the Undertaker, truthfully and honestly, you can talk about Jim Londos, uh, Wild Bill Longson, Strangler Lewis, Nature Boy Buddy Rogers, Hulk Hogan, Steve Austin, but overall for longevity, professionalism, uh, popularity, uh, the Undertaker is the, to me, the 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 biggest and best. Uh, attraction in the history of wrestling, and I w- if that was his last match, which everybody's saying it is, uh, that's that's something I want to see. And he's always been respected by you because I remember you know, years ago you making comments that he's you know one of your favorite people in wrestling and one of the most respectful and respected wrestlers. What is it about the Undertaker that's made him last you know thirty years in the WWE and even longer in the wrestling business? Oh, God, where where do I start? You know, who else has drawn that much money? Who else has had that many great matches over that long a period of time? Who else has never brought bad publicity, uh, uh, either uh, in the ring or outside the ring, onto the company that he worked for? Who else has been a locker room leader and a true professional? Who else has never shit on the wrestling business by going out and doing asinine childish things or curtain calls or exposing the business, um, you know, by any measure or any yardstick that you can use, the undertaker has been not only a true professional, but an incredible gate attraction and made money for himself and everybody he's ever worked for. So, or worked with. So, you know, that right there, if you can't respect the undertaker, you don't respect anybody ever in wrestling. Pretty crazy to think that 1990, now 2017, he had that long of a run, basically as a main eventer. I mean, he, as soon as he was in there, he was basically put in the main event. Do you think we'll ever see another guy quite like him? I think it's going to be tough, um, especially with, unfortunately, the way that things have gone, the style of, of work these days and the things that the guys are expected to do. I don't know that anybody's body will ever hold up for 27 years again. Hmm, that that is true, and on that main event level, definitely tough to do. Pretty crazy to think that that this is it after all these years. But man, what a what a crazy run! So, with him kind of being gone and the landscape going to be changing, what are your thoughts on on the current roster of WWE? Do you think they have enough, you know, top guys to kind of keep it going, or are they going to keep able to bring in these part timers? <clears throat> well, you know, everybody says, oh, the part timers, the Rock comes back and steals us. A spot, or you know, if I was a young wrestler now and I got the chance to be on a WrestleMania with The Rock or with Steve Austin or with The Undertaker or with another one of these, as they call them, part time guys, or without them, if I was smart, I would definitely opt in the with column because you're going to make more money because everybody on the card is going to make more money because those guys are legitimate megastars and they sell pay-per-view and they sell network buys and they sell live event tickets. And, and John Cena is going to be in the same category here very shortly where, you know, he's going to wind his schedule down. 
um, you know, it, it's not about guys coming in and stealing spots. It's about guys who don't have to do this anymore, but they do it because they love the business and they love the opportunity to, to get in the ring and perform coming back and drawing more money for everybody. So anybody who doesn't want to be on the rocks card or Steve Austin's card or the undertaker's card, then they need to go work PWG in California in front of 400 people. Uh, and just, and just do all the, get all their shit in as Rip Rogers would say. And make no fucking money and get paid off in goddamn hot dogs and, and fucking six packs. Because if you want to make money, you want a megastar in the main event so that the card that you're on will draw more for everybody. Anything else is just stupid. Definitely. Do you see anybody on the current roster that you could see kind of breaking out or breaking out from the mold? Would it be like a Roman Reigns? Well, you know, and, and once again, I don't follow the modern product and not just WWE, but I've, I've been clean and sober from modern wrestling for a while because it drives me crazy. You know, I, I, I see guys that do the, the spots with their dicks, and I see, you know, the people that do hypnosis in the ring and they super kick grade school children or whatever the fuck, and that's why I don't want to watch any more of, of modern wrestling because it just drives me insane and I want to hang myself in my closet. But, you know, Roman Reigns has taken a bad rap because he is the guy that the people know that he was the guy that was handpicked by the evil empire to be the guy. And so all of a sudden, just because he has the look and he has the ability and he has the, the stamina and the youth and, and the bloodlines and the whole nine yards to be a main event guy, that doesn't matter because the fans want to rebel because – the the McMahon family has been painted as the heels for so long, and there's a reason why that the promotions of wrestling down through the years, over the last hundred years, always wanted to be the baby faces, never painted themselves as heels. Because then the people go, well, why are we giving you our money, you dumb motherfuckers? So with Vince McMahon, it worked because he was one of the great performers in the history of wrestling. But after that... It, you know, it, it doesn't work. It backfires. So Roman Reigns, unfortunately, <clears throat> has been a victim of that. And, you know, I, I think the guy, I don't think he's the greatest wrestler that's ever lived. But I certainly don't think there's anything wrong with him. I think he's got all the tools. I think he needs a little more experience. And I think he'll be fine except for the baggage that he's carrying that's beyond his control. Um, you know, it, it, once again, I, I, I'm a big Seth Rollins fan. I loved him when he was Tyler Black in Ring of Honor. And when I first saw him, I said, this guy's going to be a major, major megastar. And, and there's some other guys that I feel that way about, and it just depends on the way that they're presented, truthfully, as to whether the fans pick up on that or not. Because it's, these days, it's not just about the talent a wrestler has, but it's about how the the fans perceive them based on whether they think that they're being told to like them or whether they're being allowed to like them or not. They, they, they almost were told not to like Brian Danielson, Daniel Bryan. That's why they loved him because he's a great talent, but he was being presented like, Oh, don't like this guy. Cause he's a flunky. So they said, fuck you. <laughs> we're going to like him cause he's great. And you know, it, it, it <laughs> what what we are experiencing now is the reason why that wrestling has been a work for 125 years. Because the, the, the people like the heels because they're more entertaining. And when you're told that wrestling is a work, wrestling doesn't work. So they like the heels. They don't like the baby faces. They don't like guys that have the talent because they're being told to like them. But sometimes they like guys that couldn't draw money with paper and green crayons because they're, they're told that they shouldn't like them. It's just, it's the psychology is all fucked up. Wrestling does not work when people know that it's a work. And that's what we're experiencing right now. 